In this video, we'll learn 13 essential tips and tricks for users of Inkscape version 1.3. If we create a path that has sharp corners, we can easily round the corners by activating the node tool and clicking this button up here that says add corners LPE. Then we can click and drag these white circular handles that now appear near the nodes. If we select multiple nodes, we can round their corners together. And if we hold down control and click one of the handles, it will change the corner type at that node. If we hold shift and click a handle, it will bring up a dialog where we can type in an adjustment amount. We can also choose the corner type in here. And if we choose either chamfer or inverse chamfer, we can adjust the chamfer subdivisions. If we want to reset a particular corner, we can either drag the handles back to the node, or we can hold Ctrl and Alt and click a handle. And if we want to remove the corner adjustments altogether, we can click the Add Corners LPE button again. If we want to edit the individual letters of a text object, we first have to go to Path, Object to Path, which turns all of the text into a single path. And to separate the letters into individual paths, we go to Path, Split Path. For some fonts, where some of the letters are overlapping, we try to go to Path, Object to Path, then Path, Split Path. It will combine the overlapping letters into a single path. To fix this, before converting the text into a path, we first need to go to the Text tool and add enough spacing between the letters so that they're not touching. Now turning it into a path and doing split path will make each letter a completely separate path. If we have a text object selected and we open up the path effects dialog and click the clone button in here, it creates a clone of the text object, which we can then add various path effects to. And if we edit the text of the original object, it will edit the text of the clone as well. As I've shown in previous videos, it's possible to create some pretty cool editable text effects using this method. Another thing we can do with text objects is use them as linked items in certain path effects. For example, if I copy the text object into the clipboard by right clicking it and choosing copy, then I add the boolean operation path effect to this rectangle, I can click this button here that says link to item and it will link the path effect to the text object. And by the way, for the operation, if you choose either difference or symmetric difference and the text doesn't get cut out of the rectangle, just select the rectangle, go to the fill tab of the fill and stroke dialog and click this fill rule even odd button. All right, and if I select the text object again, I can still edit the text. This also works with the pattern along path path effect. For example, I can copy the text object, apply pattern along path to this path here, and click the link to path and clipboard button. To easily cut a shape into fragments, we can draw some paths over it with the pen tool then select everything and go to Path, Fracture. If we have two shapes selected and we go to Path, Difference, it cuts the top shape out of the bottom one, but it also removes the top shape. But if we undo that, select everything again and go to Path, Flatten, it cuts the top shape out of the bottom one without removing the top one. Also, unlike with difference, we can use flatten on more than two shapes at a time. If we transform an object, such as by moving it, 
We can repeat the transform on the same object by pressing Ctrl Alt T. And we can repeat it on duplicates of the object by pressing Ctrl Alt D. We can also do this with other types of transforms like scaling and rotations. If these keyboard shortcuts aren't working, which is common among Linux and Mac users, we can change them by opening up the Preferences dialog, expanding Interface, choosing Keyboard, searching for Reapply here, then double clicking each of these lines and inputting a new combination of keys. At the left of the bottom color palette, we by default have four color options that are larger than the other color swatches. These are called pin colors. If we right click one, we can choose unpin color, which moves it back to its original location in the palette. Similarly, we can right click a color that isn't pinned and choose pin color, and it will add the color to the pin colors. We can also click the hamburger icon all the way on the right, choose configure, and uncheck this option to make the pin color swatches the same size as the regular ones. If we're working on something with specific dimensions, like a poster, we might want to hide all of the parts of objects that extend beyond the page borders. To do this easily, we can open up the Document Properties dialog and check this Clip to Page option. If we have a complex path with many nodes and we want to edit multiple nodes at once, it can be annoying to select some, then hold shift and select the others. So instead, if we hold down the Alt key, we go into freehand selection mode, which creates this red path as we click and drag. And any nodes that we draw around will get selected as soon as we release the mouse. If we use the fill and stroke dialog to blur an object, then go to the node tool, we now have these two circular handles that we can use to adjust the blur on both the vertical axis and the horizontal axis. If we hold control as we drag a handle, it will blur on both axes by the same amount. And if we hold shift and control, it will blur on both axes proportionally. If we click and hold on an object, we can press the C key to create a clone of the object at the current location. And because they're clones, changing attributes of the original object will change them for the clones as well. If we use the page tool to create multiple pages, and we add some objects to them, we can easily use the export dialog to export all of the pages into a single multi-page PDF document. To do so, we make sure we're in the Single File tab with Page selected, choose PDF as the export format, give it a name and location, and click Export. Now we have a multi-page PDF file that we can open up in any PDF reader. Okay, so those were 13 Inkscape 1.3 tips and tricks. Thanks for watching.